I see we have some new brothers, right? Some new visitors. Do we have any new sisters as well? Yes, no, just raise your hands. Just want to see your hands. Any new sisters? Okay. Then I see some new brothers. Let me see your hands. One, two, hands up. Let me I'm I'm looking, I'm trying to see we got new brothers. Who's new in here? No? He's say from Concord. You was in Concord. I think the brother said they recognized you. Brothers here is new, new. Okay, good. All praise to the most high. Um, Officer Nishan, I know you usually address the brothers, right? When we come in. So you can um let's just deal and I'm gonna just chime in because I wanna yes, get a little yes, something going on. So first of all, all praise to the most high. Good to see you, brothers. Just wanna just welcome you here in the sanctuary, right? Of IUIC. So just wanna start off by saying that. All praise to the most high. Well, we say to you, welcome home. Thank you. Welcome home. Welcome home, my brothers. Okay. <coughs> All right. What tribe you from? What you can just tell us. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. We we hear the. Uh, well, we gonna help you out with yeah, that. We gonna help you out. Well, do you what 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 would your father say he was if he was to fill out an application? Let's just go down that line. What would he say? Okay, that's Judah. Okay, that's the part. That's the tribe of Ju Judah. You hear that? That's who. That's the tribe you're from. Now, the proof of that is in the Bible. Okay, when we when we uh, ask brothers and sisters, we ask what tribe they're from. The Bible. Just get that real quick. Just to, I'll uh, I'll elaborate on it deeper. Y'all can be seated. I'll elaborate it. I'll, I'll, I will elaborate deeper concerning each tribe. But I want you to know where we get the information from. Because a lot of people be like, oh, it's a mystery, it's a this, it's a that. No, we're going to show you out the Bible where it actually points to it. Okay? You with me? How long you been uh, uh, studying this truth? Or how did you find out about us? I didn't get that part. You said a brother from Solomon L. at the... Right. Give him the microphone again, just real quick. Where the mic at? Stand up one more time and just g give me a little bit of your in info. Um, stand up see, for us. Stand, stand up, up for again. again. I'm a while back on YouTube. But right. I really like watch the videos. I've always been the the guy that actually you know study and find myself approved. Mm -hmm. So um, but I've been talking with God since I was 16, man. And you know He spoke to me on the way to school. He told me Exodus 20 in my ear. Wow. And I just started from there. Hey, you know what's heavy about that? All praise to the most high. Now, I know a lot of, a lot of people we hear because, you know, you had a, you had a, you, you said that you was talking to God. And many people be like, well, how would he be talking to God if he don't know God yet? You understand? But I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Uh, I'm going to fix that up. Give me, you can sit down. I'm, I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to deal with it. Um, give me, what is it? Job 30. What's it? No, Job 13. Yeah, 33. Give me that real quick. No, 33, and I think it's uh, 13, 14, 13, one of those. All right, let me just deal with that part of it because there's, there's a, I need another scripture also. Give me uh, 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 Job, uh, what is it, the one with the uh, 37, 37 and, I'm trying to think of the scripture, 30, the one where it says they should speak, 32 and 7. 32 and 7. Wow. Uh, Job 32 and 7. I want you to listen to this and then the other one. Okay, yes, sir. Job chapter 32 and verse 7. Now, you can get it in your Bible. You got your Bible with you? What's your name again? Denzel. Denzel. Whoa. Ah, women. Stay over there. Hey, all right. <laughs> 37. I ain't going to put them on the spot like that, but go ahead. Job 30, 37 and, I mean, what is it? 32 and 7. Yes, Read. Sir. Job chapter 32 and verse 7. I said, days should speak. I said, days should speak. Come on. A multitude of years should te teach wisdom. And a multitude of years should teach a man wisdom. When it comes to us as black men, I'll just talk about us. I, I, I'm, I can also speak about black women, but I want to zero this to black men, not excluding the black women. We can be talking about the black women, but I'm making this pertinent to men as men we always want to know what our purpose is we always wanted to know what was the reason that i was created many of our people have psychological problems because they never really find out who they are 
They go throughout society as small men, as, as boys grow up to be teenagers, young men, old men, all the way through their lives, and they never find out who they are. And, that's, and, and there's always a gaping uh, yearning inside of us that always wants to know, what is it about me? What is my purpose? Why did God cause me to be born? You understand? And I don't mean this in a, in a, uh, like it's a problem, but we always know that there's a purpose to us. And we always want to know. It's just like a person wanting to know who their father is. You understand? So we always want to know that. So what is the purpose that God has for me, for him to give me the directions or how I should live? This is something that we all go through. Some of, some of it is more pronounced. In some cases, some cases it's not so pronounced, but we always want to know who we are, where we come from. We're always doing that. Okay, read that again. I said, days should speak. I said, days should speak. Days meaning many days on this earth should give you some answers to the questions that you have. Read. A multitude of years should teach wisdom. And a multitude of years should teach a man wisdom. You have people that have been on this earth for many, 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 many years, and when you talk to them, they sound dumb as hell. And you say, how in the world could that be? With all the, how in the world are you going to be old and be simple? That, and that's like a slur on his manhood. Many days and many years should teach a man some wisdom. Read. But there is a spirit in man. And, but there is a spirit in man. That's the part that I wanted to get to. There was a spirit in you that, that wanted to know the wisdom. There's a spirit in you that wanted to know why am I here? What is my purpose? That's the point that I'm bringing out. That's when all of us, men and women, and whenever we don't find what that purpose is, that's when I was saying about psychological problems. That's when we turn to drugs. That's when we turn to bad behavior. That's what we do because we're trying to compensate for an emptiness that's in us. That makes sense? Okay, read that again. But there is a spirit in man. But there is a spirit in man. Go ahead. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. And the spirit of the Almighty giveth them what? Understanding. That was that voice in you that was saying, you know what? I need to try to find out about what's going on. And that's how you said, when you said that you had that connection with God, this is what I'm talking about. You dig it? Now, give me the other one. Job, chapter 33 and verse 14. For God speaketh once. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Start there. For God speaketh once. You, you know what? Start with verse 13. Verse 13. Why We're does, in the book. You got it? Read. Why dost thou strive against him? We are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, which I'm going to deal with about us being Israelites. So I'm going to come to that next real quick. Read that again. Why dost thou strive against him? Why do people strive against the Lord? In other words, the Most High has got the plans on his people. We are the people that broke God's laws. God said, if you don't want to adhere to what I have to say, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to do, th I'm going to do things to afflict you to bring you back. And whenever we strive against that, the Lord is going to call us at different times. He's going to say, that, you know what? It's time for me to see if he's ready to repent and get himself together. It's time for me to see if she's going to repent and get herself together. That's the Lord talking to us. Read it again. Why dost thou strive against him? So why do we strive against God's plans? Go ahead. For he giveth not account of any of his matters. For God giveth not account of any of his matters. In other words, God doesn't have to explain why he's doing what he's doing because he is the most high. Read. For God speaketh once. For God speaketh once. Yea, twice. Yea, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not. You don't know exactly why you're here today. There were decisions that was made between when you laid down or yesterday or the day before that the Most High intervened and said, you know what? It's time for me to wake you, uh, Denzel, up. I'm going to hit Denzel right now. Boom. And he might have somebody to just come across your path and say something, say a couple of things. You might seen a video. You might have passed the brothers in the street. You might have heard one scripture, Deuteronomy 28 or Exodus or whatever. You might have heard one scripture and it got your attention. God said, okay, it's time for me to get him. You dig it. Read, 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 read it again. Read that statement again. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Yet man doesn't realize that God is calling you. When I first came into this truth, that was literally said to me. The brother that was teaching it said, the Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. 
That night I walked into the school. That was in 1991. That night, I said, this, this got to be the Lord calling me. And I didn't know the scriptures that I'm going over. I didn't know none of them. You dig it. Read. In a dream. In a dream. In a vision of the night. In the vision of the night. When deep sleep falleth upon men. You can look at them. We read now. Go ahead. Read that again. When deep sleep. Read it again. In a dream. In a dream. Sometimes we'll get it and we'll be sleep. Go ahead. In a vision of the night. In a vision of the night. The when, Most High appears to us in many different ways, like it says in Hebrews. Go ahead. When deep sleep falleth upon men. When deep sleep falleth upon men. Go ahead. And slumberings upon the bed. And slumberings upon the bed. You getting your good sleep. You dig it, right? You turning over, getting that good wink. You out. Go ahead. Then. He openeth the ears of men. Then God openeth up the ears of men. Go ahead. And sealeth their instruction. And he sealeth their instructions. In other words, he's going to direct them on what they're going to do, irregardless of what they said they were going to do before they went to bed. When you went to bed, you probably say, well, I'm going to get up. I'm going to uh, go to this and I'm going to go to the store and get this and do that or whatever. Then you wake up and you don't do any of that at all. You ever had that happen before? Yes. That's the most high directing you. Okay. The scriptures, another part of the scriptures say man's goings is of the Lord's, meaning he's the one that's directing us. So my point is there's no accident while you're here. That's my point. You were directed here. You understand that? Okay. Now give me uh, Genesis. Genesis. Then I'm going to go into my, my little lesson that's going to deal with everybody. You all right? All right. Now, me speaking to my brother Denzel, this is not me putting him on a spot. You don't feel that way, do you? Because you're here with your brothers. Can you dig it? All right. Uh, read. Genesis 49. Gen Genesis 49, 1 and 2. Dealing with the tribes, the thing with the tribes. Listen. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons. Jacob is the father of the nation of Israel. Okay. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And Israel, so you know about that history. Israel had 12, Jacob, which is Israel, had 12 sons. This is what we're reading about here. Read it again. And Jacob called unto his sons. And Jacob called unto his 12 sons. Go ahead. And said, gather yourselves together. He said to his sons, gather yourselves before me. You sons come before me. This is what he's saying. Go ahead. That, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. That I, your father Israel, shall tell you what shall befall or what shall happen to you in the last days. Okay? So the, Mo so the Most High was revealing to Israel to tell his different, to the, the, uh, the sons where each of them, where they were going to be at and what characteristics that was going to be upon them in the last days. You with me? That's what's happening. So this is not just made up. Read it again. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. That I, sh that I will tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Now, let's read about Judah. Jump down to verse 8. Yes, sir. Verse 8. Judah. Judah is the fourth. Judah was the fourth born son of Israel. Okay? Read it again. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thou, thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. In other words, Judah was going to be the one that was going to give it, that's going to be in the neck, literally, of his enemies, meaning, and saying two things. Number one, in the, in the, lo, uh, the, who, is the who is the enemy of the Israelites, the so-called white man? Let's start with that. Okay? He's the enemy of everybody. <laughs> okay, so somebody might be saying, well, he's the enemy of other people too. That's true. He's the enemy of everybody. But read that again. Judah, thou art he whom thy brother shall praise. Thou, he said, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. What this means is that the truth that what you're hearing was going to start with the tribe of Judah. Give me that in, um, give me that scripture. Y'all know, now y'all know, y'all got to get the scriptures that I'm asking for now. Uh, the tents. You with me? Okay. Here. You understand the reason why I'm going from this book to that book and all that? Did you get that? You got that part of the understanding? 
That's in the book of Isaiah. It said precept upon precept line up. So you know about that. You've been following us online a little bit, have you? No? So you. Oh, see. Right, right. Okay. All praise to the most. High. Well, brother, you in the right place. Because you're going when you leave here, there's a whole world of information and videos that we have that's going to help you in every step of your walk in this truth. You understand that? All praise to the most. I know you're a little bit nervous. Are you? A little bit? Okay, but it's okay. That's why, that's why I put myself in your shoes and spoke about when I first came into the truth. Okay, so like I said, it was said to me when I first walked in. They asked me a series of questions just like what we did. How did you find out about us? Where did you learn about us? All that. And I said, I was up the street. and I was, I'm from New York, and the camp was in New York. Okay, so when this happened, I was in front of the brothers. The brothers was teaching. And I said, um, I, when I came into the school, the brother said, well, how, do you, how did you come to find this information out? And I said, I was listening to the brothers up the street, and they were showing me stuff out of the Bible, answering my questions. And I said, after all of that information, I couldn't deny it. So I asked them, I said, where's your school at? And they told me that the school was up the block. And that was the address, 1 West 125th Street. You heard that stuff before, the 1 West name. I'm from the school. A lot of stuff running around out here talking about one West. They've never seen the building a day in their life. You dig it? So I ain't, I ain't going to go down that level. But you got my point. Okay, read. Zechariah, chapter 12 and verse 7. So when I walked into the school and I told him all of this, the brother looked at me and he said, welcome home. So that's the reason why I said it to you. Okay? Okay, read. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The Lord shall also save the tents of Judah first. Meaning all the 12 tribes broke the laws of the Most High, but the Most High was going to use Judah to teach the rest of the tribes. That's how, that's how Ephraim found out that they were Ephraim. That's how uh, Simeon found out they was Dominican. That's how Issachar found out that they were the Mexicans. That's how, uh, um, give me some of the other, Benjamin. Uh, found out that they were the West Indians. That's how Levi found out that they were the quote-unquote Haitians because Judah had to teach them that because the Most High was going to give the information to Judah. That's what we're reading here. Let's read it again. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The Lord shall save the tents of Judah first. Okay? That's the reason why it's saying what it said over there in Genesis. He shall save the children of Judah. He says he shall save the tents of Judah first. Read on. That the glory of the house of David. That the glory of the Israelites. And the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And the inhabitants. Inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Because it, the Israelites, especially if you look at Ephraim, you had the kingdom of, you had the northern kingdom, which was headed by Ephraim. You dig it? The, the, the nation of Israel was split in two parts during the time of King Solomon. You with me so far? You know about that? Not really? Okay, I'm just giving you a brief history. Everybody's all right? Uh, the kingdom was split. You had the, the head of the northern kingdom was headed by Ephraim, which is Puerto Ricans. Okay? Then you, and the head of the southern kingdom was Judah. The kingdom was split during the time of Solomon. After the, after the death of King Solomon, I'll say it that way. Um, after that, uh, we went into captivity because the history showed that not Ephraim didn't keep the uh, laws of the Most High. They were drawn to idols and started worshiping all types of evil. And Judah was the only one that was left in the land at that time because the kingdom of Assyria had taken them into captivity. And then Babylon overthrew uh, Assyria. And then Babylon went and conquered Judah. Now all 12 tribes is in captivity under the Babylonians. Okay? I don't, ex you might not remember all of that, but I'm just giving you the quick rundown. So now all of the Israelites are in captivity. Later on, we ended up, I'm just speeding it up real quick. Later on, we ended up on the slave ships. That's what Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter is about. All 12 tribes went into captivity. Judah came over here in slave ships. The northern kingdom was already over here in the lands of Gad and uh, in the lands of the Americas. And the conquistadors came to destroy them later because they knew that they were the Israelites that came out of the Persian captivity when King Cyrus had released, had granted us liberty to go back into Jerusalem and build. So now the Israelites were over here. Gad, Reuben, Simeon, Manasseh, uh, Issachar, they were already on this side of the world. 
Columbus knew that. That's the reason why he sent his voyage over here to pillage them. Don't, that lie that they talk about that he was lost, Columbus was not lost at all. Columbus had, had the, he had the records. There's a movie, if anybody doubts me, there's a movie that they put out here called um, uh, 1492, The Conquest of Paradise. Came out, came out like 20, 30 years ago. They showed it clear. The, 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 the man that was playing Columbus said that we know that there's land over there because it's recorded in the book of Esdras. And it talked about the 10 tribes that went over there and, and populated all these tribes, of, populated all these lands over here. So Columbus knew where he was going. You follow me? Okay, and they got it written in the records. Some of the records that they knew that this land was what they called the land of Osirith. Columbus understood that as what they now call America. That's in the history books. Okay, but they lying in school. So uh, Israel is over here in captivity. Then they brought Judah in chains, the slave ships. That's Deuteronomy again. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, talked about how we came over here in slavery. So the point is, is that Ephraim and Judah all had always had this schism between each other. This, this thing where Ephraim want to be over Judah. Judah's trying to establish, no, I'm the top. Ephraim is trying to say, I'm the top. So there was always a vexation between the two. You dig what I'm saying? That's in the book of Ezekiel. It said that, that when the Lord gives us the proper, inf the proper wake up, we are no longer going to be vexing each other. We're going to come together as the nation of Israel. Okay? But this point that's being uh, mentioned here, it said that, that the tribes don't magnify themselves against Judah because y'all already know how a lot of the tribes view the quote-unquote Negro. You dig it? There's a lot of people say, I don't like the Mexicans. I don't like them Puerto Ricans. I don't like that because they, they, they always seem, there seems to be like a dislike towards the Judah, towards the, the so-called Negro. You've heard that before, yes? Okay, that's what we were addressing here. Read that again in Zechariah. So listen, I know I just said a whole lot. Uh, over time, you, we'll get more details so you, so you understand to fill in the gaps. You with me? But I just gave you that brush of history. I don't want to overload you. This is your first day. You with me? Okay. Uh, read that again. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. He was gonna. He was gonna make sure that Judah gets its gets his respect because uh, normally Judah would not have gotten the respect. So he said, "I'm gonna give you the knowledge to teach the rest of them, so that that, that so that they will have to respect you." You dig it? Christ comes out of that tribe, Judah. All of us are brethren. All, you, all the 12 tribes, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, we're all brothers. We come from the same mother and father, mainly the main father. We all come out of Jacob. So we're the Israelites, clearly. Read it again. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Go ahead. Here's the reason why. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So that they don't magnify themselves against Judah. So the Most High wanted to make sure that Judah get honored. So he put, he made sure that Judah got the information to teach the rest of the tribes. You understand that? Now let's go back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Go ahead. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. We are the ones that's given, we are the most, the civil rights, all of the different revolutions that's going on in the, in the, in the, uh, in the quote unquote Spanish communities, in the Spanish countries. You dig what I'm saying? The revolutions like the, like the Brown Berets, like the Young Lords. Okay, there's another one, uh, AIM, the uh, American Indian Movement. All of these, all of these Northern Kingdom groups was was inspired by the by the standing by the uh, br by the black man standing up in the streets in the sixties, you dig it? That was putting it out there. Said, listen, we getting ready to go deal. We tired of this. I'm a man. Black power, all of that. You dig it? That was and that information fueled the rest of the brothers to get it together. You dig it? That's why I was saying in the neck of Dinica, we were the ones that was we were the ones that made it easier for everybody else. And a lot of us today, we get upset. We say, everybody else, now you got other nations benefiting. 
coming over, getting all kinds of grants, all kinds of loans. But we were the ones that broke this devil down. You understand what I'm saying? We were the ones that was in, like, in his neck. You dig it? To get some kind of liberalness so that the rest of the people could get in. We were the ones getting assassinated. We were the ones that was getting lynched and hung and burned. You understand that? Read. Read it again. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Come on. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Read. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. They're going to thank Judah for finding out that they're the Israelites. Okay. So I'm going to stop there in terms of that. And then I'm going to get one more scripture. Then I'm going to go on my lesson. You with me? Uh, no. Read on. Read on. He said, thy children shall bow down before thee. Because what happened? The Israelites, the, the, the other tribes are learning that they're the Israelites. They're learning that Christ died for them. They know that they're going to they're gonna get a kingdom and they're going to get revenge for the, for the evil that the conquistadors and the murderers did to our brothers in Santo Domingo. That did to our brothers in Puerto Rico and, and in Mexico and in, and in uh, South America and all that. Now they know that the Lord is going to revenge them for the evil that was done to them. But they learned that because of your tribe. You understand that? Okay. Read. Judah is a lion's whelp. Judah is a lion's whelp. From Go the, ahead. From the prey, my son. This is us standing up with power. Go ahead. Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion. He couched as a lion. Go ahead. And as an old lion. Oh, wait a minute. So when we was in the streets in the 60s, this is also paralleled in the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Have you ever heard of this parable? At least they'll speak about it sometimes in the street. And they talk about the valley of the dry bones. You ever heard that before? The valley of the dry bones is talking about you. The valley of the dry bones is talking about us. Even Malcolm X understood that. And he said that in his, one of his last speeches before they killed him. You heard what I just said? Read that again. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion. And as an old lion. So what happened to that, sp that 16 spirit? What happened? That's the question. Read that again. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a, a lion. He couched as a lion like he was ready to pounce on the prey. But what happened? And as an old lion. But we became an old lion. We became an old lion. What made us old? Drugs. You digging it? Drugs. That was one of the main things they did. Assassinations. False religion. Bad schooling. Policies. And prison, uh, manu uh, prison uh, programs designed to lock our brothers up. That's what wore us down. Read that statement again. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as an old lion. He couched as, a, as, he a, couched as a lion. He don't say an old lion. Read it again. He, Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. He couched as a lion like he's ready to pounce on the prey. Go ahead. And as an old lion. But we became an old lion. Who shall the, rouse him up? Who's going to wake him up from the drugs? Who's going to wake him up from, from the psych programs, from the psych men, messed up hospitals? Who's going to raise him up from the prisons? Who's going to raise him up for feeling like he's nothing? Who's going to raise him up? That's where this tribe Judah going to come in and teach you, like, like you're being taught now, like I was taught. Brothers, people that look like me had to come to me and show me that I was better than what I thought I was because of the inferior education I had received. Making sense? All right, all praise to the most high. Now, give me Deuteronomy 28. 28. Just make, just make it real plain and then we get on with the lesson. Everybody's all right? Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to you pass. You know what? Give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1 first. Brother said he was in the... Was, uh, he learned by Exodus. What, what chapter in Exodus particularly that got you? The Ten Commandments. The, the Exodus chapter 20. That is, this is definitely the most high. 
Exodus chapter 20. One of the, one of the verses in that chapter is going to help you understand what I'm about to read now. If you said that you was with my brother, uh, Sal, I guess y'all, y'all talked about this. Y'all went through this. I'm going to put a little bit more on it. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? All right, all praises. Read. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. The question is, Moses is speaking to who? The Israelites. He's not speaking to other nations. He's speaking to all Israel. The question is, are we the Israelites? That's what we want to find out. I already pointed out that you was Judah, but I'm going to super prove it with this. Read. On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. Because this was when we had just came out of ancient Egypt. The same book that you was talking about, Exodus 20. That's when we was coming out of Egypt. You dig it. Hence, the name Exodus means exiting out of. So we were coming out of, we were coming out of bondage then. You with me? Read. And the plain over against the Red Sea. So these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So every, all the words in the book of Deuteronomy is being spoken to the Israelites. That's the point that I want you to get, right? Now give me uh, chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. Hold it. Slow down. I want them to get it. You got it? Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. Read. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And these be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. What are the words that he said? It shall come to pass that if thou shalt not, what? Hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you don't listen to these commandments that the, that the Most High told Moses to give us, if you break these commandments, this is going to happen. Read it again. But it shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you will not listen to the, to the voice of the Lord, your father, your God, thy God. That's what it means. Your father. Our father is the most high. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments. To observe and to do all his commandments. Come on. And his statutes. And his statutes. Which I command thee this day. Which Moses commanded us this day because the father told him to tell us this. Go ahead. That all these curses shall come upon thee that and all these curses shall come upon you go ahead and overtake thee and overtake you so moses wrote down the prophecy about the curses that was going to happen to us that's what this chapter is how come these preachers never show you that They're, all these churches got bibles in them how in the world are my people sitting in there and they're not teaching them this read curse shall thy be in the city and curse shall thy be in the field that's, the, that's, the, that's that low business that I was talking about, how we feel like nothing. How this educational system taught us garbage about ourselves. The Lord is saying that was going to be a curse because of your disobedience. This whole chapter shows you that. The whole slave trade is in this book. That's what we're reading here. How in the hell are you going to put up a white Jesus? There ain't no white Jesus in the Bible. Jesus is black. Give me the 68 verse. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. I wanted to jump to this because of your remembrance of Exodus 20. Read that again. The 68 verse. This is, a, this is one of the main curses that happened to From verse 15 all the way to 68, all those verses happened to us. They're talking about some 6 million so-called Jews. They didn't fit this. That fit you. That fit your fathers. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord shall bring you, Israel, into Egypt again. Now let's clarify what it's talking about. It said that you shall go into Egypt again. Now we got to find out what it's talking about. What is Moses talking about? Go to Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I want you to get it because you've been reading this. Exodus chapter 20, read 1 and 2. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And read it again. I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord your father, your God, your power. That's what God is saying to us through Moses again. This is the second book of Moses. You have the first five books was known as the Torah. Genesis, uh, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Did I say it in the right order? 
Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, I get them mixed up. But it's five of them. You all right? Read that again. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Which have brought thee out. So our bondage was over at that point. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. What did it say after that? Out of the house of bondage. It's telling you what the word Egypt itself means. It says, the Lord said, I'm taking you out of Egypt, and I'm taking you out of the house of bondage. The word Egypt is a Greek word for Mizraim. Mizraim, if you look, find a good dictionary to break it down, the name Mizraim means hardship, restraint, misery, bondage. Okay, the Greeks labeled that Egypt. But when they got into power, they changed the names of all of the people. They changed the names of the, of the, of the nations. And they put, they put Egypt on that land. But it's known as bondage because the Israelites was held in bondage there. Read it again. You with me? Read. Read it again. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out, out of the house of bondage. So we, would, we was out of bondage. We was out of Egypt. You follow me? We were out of Egypt, and Egypt means bondage, so we were out of that. So now we come from Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now we're in Deuteronomy, which is three to four books further, further up in the history. Everybody's with me, right? Now we're in Deuteronomy, and Moses says what in the 68th verse? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Why is he saying again? Because we just came out of bondage. He said, if you break these laws of the Most High, you're going right back in that situation that you were just delivered from. You, you didn't, you getting this. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. But this time, the bondage that you're going to go to is going to be by the use of ships. Do you hear this? You're going to get to bondage this time on ships. We never went back to ancient Egypt. Never. So why is it saying you're going to get to bondage on ships? Because that was going to come many years later, the 1600s. There's a whole lot of history you got to learn if you don't know it. We end up migrating to the coast. We migrated further into Africa, ended up on the West Coast, and was sold to the Egypt. To, we were sold to the white man by the, by the real Africans sold us as for musket guns and wine. We ended up on those slave ships. That's what we're reading here. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Now, we got tribes. We got Israelites in Africa because a lot of us probably, a lot of us went, came back. Some of them had went from the migration, from the uh, dispersion, what they call the dispersion after 70 AD. Millions of our people fled down into the interiors of Africa. You dig it? So some of our people stayed there. But a lot of us was brought over here on the slave ships. You understand what I'm saying? So we got people over there in Africa. That's our people. You follow me? Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord shall bring you Israelites into bondage again. That's the reason why I say in Egypt, he will bring you into bondage again. Go ahead. With ships. But you're going to get to this bondage on ships. I don't know what's wrong with the Negro preacher that can read this and say, this ain't talking about you. Everybody on the planet know that you came over here on slavery, on ships, chained up. They know that. What in the hell is wrong with these men? Excuse my French. You all right? Can you handle it? It, it makes me upset to know that these men got the Bible and, uh, and our people are asleep in dope. That lying mess called Christianity, that's not the Bible. You're hearing the Bible for the first time now. How old are you? 25. For the first time in 25 years, you actually hear in the Bible. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord shall bring you Israelites into bondage again. A second time. Go ahead. With ships. With ships. That's how you're going to get to this bondage. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. The way Moses had it recorded in the Bible is exactly how it's going to happen. We're going to read it, what it's talking about. Read on. Thou shalt see it no more again. We shall see our homeland no more again. We don't even know that Jerusalem is ours. That's our land. Them Afri I mean, those Arabs and, and so-called white men calling themselves Jews, 
None of them belong there. They all going to get blown to hell when the Most High come back, when Christ come back. Read it again. Go ahead, read it again. Read that statement again. Thou shall see it no more again. We shall see our homeland no more again. We don't even know that Jerusalem is our land. Go ahead. And there. And there, when you get to this bondage where we're where we being sold, you with me? And there, when you get to this new Egypt. Go ahead, listen. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You shall be sold unto your enemies. Who's saying this? God. Read that again. And you there. And ye, there, in this new Egypt, where you were going, where you were going to go in ships, and there, what ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You shall be sold unto your enemies. Read for bondmen. That's explained in Egypt. You shall be sold as what it say. You shall be sold unto your enemies for what? For bondmen. Bondmen means bondage. The house of bondage. That's what Moses said it. In the house of bondage for bond men and bond women and bond women. Your women was in bondage and you was in bondage. Who's writing this? God. Who told Moses to record it? God. Because that's a prophecy. Moses can't foresee the future. God put that in there. Read. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall redeem you, shall save you from being sold. No man shall redeem you. That's what buy means. The B-U-I means to redeem, to save. No man shall save you from this curse because you broke God's laws. That's what that by means, means there. Now, I'm going to go a step further. Could we, I'm going to show you how your enemies think. Put up the NIV. Put up the NIV. You know what I say? When I say NIV, do you know what I'm talking about? The NIV translation, I'm going to show you that it's garbage and it's racist as hell. NIV, Deuteronomy, the, 20, the same verse that we just read. NIV, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Verse 68, the exact same verse we read. Listen to this garbage. And they know that you're the Israelites, so they try to hide that truth from you by trying to confuse you once again. Read. This is, this is Deuteronomy 28, 68 in the NIV. The Lord will send you back in ships to Egypt on a journey I said you should never make again. There ye will offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no one will buy you. What is your understanding after reading that? That doesn't even make sense. But instead of the people in church coming across that and say, this don't make sense, and say something to the hey, preacher, what the hell are you talking about? This don't make any sense. They sit there and bang the tambourine and go to sleep. That doesn't even make any sense at all. How in the world could you, if you're going to offer yourselves here I am. I'm a slave. I'm gonna. I'm offering myself. Listen, I'm trying to be your slave. I'm offering myself to you. Please make me your slave. And the damn thing says, and no man shall buy you. They're making you think that that bottom part of Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter that we read for real. They're making you think that that buy is the buy like you bought and sold. That's the point that I'm making. You follow me? They're trying. So look at it again. There you will offer yourselves for sale, uh, for, for sale to your enemies as, as male and female slaves. What people ever did that? But for them to go this far to try to derail you from the proper understanding, you must be the Israelites. For them to go that far. For them to actually create a doggone new translation and lie, straight up lie. That means, that means your knowledge of this truth is super dangerous to them that they will go all those great links to put a lie and call it a Bible. You see that? Heavy information, ain't it? Read it one more time. I'm going to help the Bible. I'm going to calm down a little bit. Read it again. The Lord will send you back in ships to Egypt on a journey I said you should never make again. There, there you will offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves. So we are all, it's saying that we're offering ourselves. Please take me as a slave. Please, please, please. And what does it say? But no one will buy you. So here's the, here's the enemy saying, no, I don't want to buy you. Get out of here. I'm not buying you. I don't want you as a slave. Get out. That never happened in history, did it? Can I get a witness? Can the church say amen? Can the church say amen again? 
Y'all all right? <laughs> That's complete madness. Complete madness. Now let's go back to the real one. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the let's put it on the screen. Let's put it on the screen. Let's get the real one on the screen. I'm going to show you how evil your enemies are. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So Moses is explaining what we just said in Exodus. He said, I am the Lord your God that have taken you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. But because of your disobedience, you will go back into Egypt. But this time you're going to get there on ships. That makes sense. Correct? Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there. And there, when you get to this new Egypt, go ahead. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. You shall be sold unto your enemies. Here's the point. For by. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You shall be sold. If you are sold, did somebody buy you? Let's say it again. You have a car. If you sold the car. Did somebody buy the car? In order for it to be sold, past tense means somebody bought it. You got me. You understand what I'm saying? You can't say you shall be sold and then you read in that garbage and it says, but no man shall buy you. They, that, this don't say nothing about no you offering anything. This is saying that you, was, you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. So that means we was already bought. You dig it? We were already purchased. Let me make it that way. Somebody already paid a price on the auction block. Let me just make it clear. We was already paid for. Boom, sold. Okay? They got some visceral uh, history here. That, 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 it's, it's, it's the stuff that we don't want to hear. But when you hear that, boom, everybody in here knows what that means. So we were sold on auction blocks. You with me, all right? So then after that, it says, and no man shall buy you. They figured that you would not understand what that meant. That part means that no one will redeem you from being sold. That's the understanding. Reverend, Reverend Hamhocks should have explained that to the people. Instead of leaving them confused, and then they go run to that, that printed diarrhea talking about this is the book of the Lord, that NIV garbage. You understand that? Okay. So we were sold, and someone bought us. And when we were bought, the Bible is saying, and no man shall redeem you. That's what buy means. That's an old English, Quaker English word, which means redeem and save. No one shall save you from captivity because Christ was going to be the one to save us. That's what this is saying. You got that? Some heavy information, ain't it? So there's a big, there's a big uh, price that's going to be paid for these nations putting their nasty hands on us because we are the apple of God's eye. You need to understand that. The nations are going to pay for what they did to us. The most high God recorded all in the scriptures. That's the reason why all this stuff is going on now because they don't want you to wake up because they know there's a heavy, pay, there's a heavy payment that they got to pay for them even touching us. They're going to pay for that. Although we broke the laws of the Most High, the Most High said, for your violence against my people, shame shall cover you. That's what he's going to do to the nations. The nations ain't seen no damn judgment yet. What the Most High going to do to these nations for what they did to us is going to look like child's play. And it's no accident why you're still here. They would have been killed us off. Most High said, no, you're not killing them because I'm going to use these same people to rule the whole planet. That's where you're going. You enduring this truth, the kingdom is yours. A lot of our people ain't going to endure in this truth because they're going to allow themselves to be fooled with Christianity and the rest of these things, and they're going to fall out this truth. You're going to see that. You understand what I'm saying? I've been, I've been in this walk and this truth for 30 years. I've seen a lot of faces come and go. They've learned all of this and more. Some of them were great, be with, great been able to quote and do all kind of stuff. Now they're bugged out, sk spiritual skid row. Because Satan going to come at you hard when you try to get yourselves right. He'll send women. He'll send old friends. He'll send parents. He'll send anything to try to put pressure on you. You can even change your sex and be okay. 
You can say you can go to work the next day and say, I'm a woman. And here come the, here come the protections, the, the, the laws, everything else to protect you so that you can put on a dress and flaunt your behind talking about some you're a woman. But if you say you're an Israelite, you got problems. Think about that. Think about that. Here a man born with penis and the testicles and all of that. Big, burly man. Talking about some, I'm fruity and I'm going to put on a dress. And all of a sudden, he gets protection. And it's okay. You got to refer to him as, as she. What the hell you mean? It's easier to do that than to say that you're an Israelite. They'll go to this link to lie and change this verse around so that you'll never figure out that it's you. My whole point in showing you this is that we've been, we've been taught that we were so insignificant that nobody pays attention to us. On the contrary, everybody's paying attention to you. Literally. All the nations are watching you, watching me, watching us. Because they say when the Lord raised that nation up, everybody's in trouble because that's the people of God. That's what you're finding out. You all right? Okay. Now, all right, I'm going to let Denzel relax a little bit. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.